looking round, I finally see I think I need a change The rat race I wanna flee My world I'll rearrange I'm getting back to the roots Of how it's meant to be Growing gardens, picking fruit Racing livestock, living free It's a modern homestead Hello and welcome to the Modern Homesteading Podcast. My name is Harold Thornbro, and today I'm joined by uh, a return guest, Carrie Brown. Been a while, Carrie. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Good. Yeah, it what been about three or four years since you was on here last. I think. Uh, um, I think you uh, talked about wood stoves last time you was on. I did. You actually, uh, you were my, you were my first uh, podcast interview. So that's where that I, right? I got started. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've been, uh, you've been a busy guy since I last talked to you. Um, you, uh, you've kind of made a career change and you're, uh, pretty well full time in the old, uh, permaculture homesteading gardening design thing now. So you're making it happen. And I want to hear a little bit more about that. So I want you to take a minute and kind of introduce yourself and let people know who you are and, um, kind of where you're going there. Yeah. Yeah, so Carrie Brown, I am uh, a kind of a, a homesteader type of guy here in East Tennessee. Um, I'm going to be 40 years old in July, and in 2020, like a lot of us did, had to get creative about our uh, about our direction and our our employment. So to back us up just a little bit, I was I had a 15 year career. In EMS, working on the ambulance mainly, and in uh, let's see, it would have been October of 2018. I decided that that particular phase of my life was done, and when I'm ready to move on from something, it just stops, and I do something different. <laughs> so I uh, I left the field. I was working kind of like a couple of different wage jobs. One was at a bakery, and then. For a year or so at that point, I've been doing a little bit of mowing, a little bit of landscaping on the side on my days off. And when the shutdowns happened, the bakery closed in March and we did not know when it was going to reopen. So I immediately decided to just scale up the landscaping, most of which involved um, mowing and trimming for my neighbors in the old neighborhood. We, We were in a little urban neighborhood with a whole bunch of little yards that nobody wanted to mow in terms of like the big companies because you couldn't get big equipment into any of those yards. Mm -hmm. So with my uh, little push mower and a few other pieces of equipment, um, got after it in a big way. And like, you know, I want to say it was after maybe two months, maybe even a little bit less, uh, kicked myself off of the unemployment that I had applied for when the bakery closed. Because I just had so much work. I was just like, I think we're good to go. Like it just took off. And uh, so I kind of, I kind of, I kind of built it from there. And uh, yeah, I'll pause there for now because it's kind of a, it's kind of a big story. Yeah. Yeah. So you train, so you eventually you're going to transition from just like lawn upkeep and landscaping to, to really a full blown permaculture business, really. Huh? Yeah. We'll get into that for sure. Um, so your name of your company is Strong Roots Resources? I did. And it it actually, the name came to me when I was still in my bakery position. Um, I did a lot of uh, kind of repetitive work. So I just mostly had podcasts in my ears and audiobooks while I was plugging away. And I'd had the, the concept of some kind of uh, permaculture-based, small homesteading-based business. And my original idea was to actually set up a a tour service that would involve like a 15-passenger van. And I would coordinate kind of like various homestead and small farm, especially looking at like sustainable permaculture-style farms mm-hmm. and truck people around. And I like I would handle all the logistics knowing that most people who run farms and homesteads can't handle dealing with the public on top of everything else that they're doing. So I had that idea and I've been kicking it around for a couple of years. And I even went down to the Knoxville Entrepreneurship Center, which is kind of a, it's part of the Chamber of Commerce and they help you kind of build out your ideas and 
and they kind of have like a mentorship program. And when I sat down with those folks and I kind of sketched it out, they were enthusiastic about the idea, but they said, you know, at your current level of capital, which was about $500, um, we had concerns about liability and I wasn't willing to get a loan to start all this. Right. And it was kind of an untested concept too. Yeah. So what ended up happening was the fact that I realized I already had a skill set to, to teach. I had a, you know, kind of a design, uh, urban layout, suburban, small scale, intensive production skill set that I've been cultivating on my own at our old urban homestead for at that point, you know, 12 or 13 years. Mm -hmm. So, um, as it turns out, people will pay you to, uh, to be taught, um, <laughs> on these things. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's kind of what I ended up steering it towards. And I kept the name a little bit generic, not knowing what direction I would sure. ultimately take it. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. So your, your initial plan was just to do, take farm tours onto other people's farms and homesteads and kind of just show how they were uh, kind of working out, uh, uh, regenerative farms and things and just teach that way. That's pretty cool, man. I mean, you're down there with a lot of folks. I mean, I know Nicole sauce isn't too far from me and there's some other, I think Ryan Steve is pretty close to you down there too. Yep. I mean, you got a few people down there that are doing a lot of things like that. And yeah, I can imagine your connections down there. You could probably hook that up pretty good. I would have thought, but like you said, though, it's kind of an untested concept and um, would people pay a lot of money for that or not? I don't know. I mean, how many, I mean, I'm sure there's some people that would pay for that, but I don't know how many would, but yeah, it was a good idea though. I like it. It's pretty cool and i may pick it up again i mean as yeah. i as i scale my stuff up and you know we get a little more money in the reserves and that sort of thing um i may revisit it because you know right now a lot of what i'm doing is still really labor intensive and in another five or ten years i may not want to be working quite that hard but right. i'm sure i'm still <laughs> going to want to get out and visit with folks make these connections show stuff off mm -hmm. uh, and we're working on kind of getting our own place now where we're at now set up as a um, as a demonstration site as well. Yeah. Are you on the same property? Uh, when I talked to you last time, I know you had had a home and you put wood stoves in it and you, you know, it was kind of getting established as the same place. No, actually. Uh, so in October of 2020, um, we, uh, we decided to move, um, which was a little bit of a hard decision, but seeing, you know, with the way the shutdowns were, and some of the, while Knoxville didn't have any issues, seeing the level of unrest that was happening in other cities, I was not especially uh, happy with the, uh, the the density of the number of people around us. So, and also I kind of maxed out the property. I had pretty much fit in everything that I could do. And at that point I was limited by space. Mm -hmm. um, so in October in 2020, uh, we sold the house to some friends, um, just did a real simple, just like private sale, didn't deal with realtors or anything like that. And we came back out here to the property I grew up at. So we're out on the West end of the County now. And, uh, mom and dad are here. My brother lives in a house here. And so we, uh, we picked out a spot here kind of towards the top of the Hill and got a, got a workshop delivered got our cabin delivered and have just kind of gradually started building out new systems, um, loosely working with about 10 acres where we're at now. Nice. Yeah. Great. So you're, what are you doing any livestock or is it just pretty much gardening and, and permaculture in the, in the gardening area plants? Yeah, we've got it. It's, I, I think I'm going to go heavy on plants and trees and perennial systems. We do have turkeys. Um, we've got a few chickens. Okay. Um, got some baby chickens in the brooder right now. Um, and turkey eggs incubating. So I will probably scale those guys up just a little bit. But um, we have a lot of predator pressure out here. Yeah. Um, mostly coyotes. So as much as I would like to have some goats in here to help me clear some underbrush and really some sheep to graze the mm -hmm. pasture that's still in good shape. Uh, that's kind of like an on down the road. Plus I, I travel a lot now for yeah. teaching and consulting. So I'm making sure the animals that are here is stuff that angel can handle when I'm away. Right. So we'll, I'd love to have ruminants if I can spend every day here. 
I could make it happen. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, when you start getting into talking about permaculture, man, I mean, you can absolutely, I get people ask me all the time, can you do permaculture without animals? Absolutely. You can, mm -hmm. but when you can tie animals into it, it just makes things so much uh, better. I mean, you, you're, you know, as far as closing the loop anyway, I mean, you can bring that stuff in, but when you can have the animals on the property, it, it really, it really does a lot to close that loop on the property um, as far as fertilizers and just using those animals to do a lot of the work for you too. And, and it's great to have, but yeah, you're, you're busy when you're busy and you're traveling. Yeah. It's, it's really difficult. I get that for sure. But it sounds like you got a little bit going on anyway. I mean, turkeys are like not the easiest animal to raise anyway, are they? <laughs> no, they're, um, and, and, they're kind of uh this is my first so i've had them for right at a year now yeah. and um they're just kind of hard to warm up to <laughs> they're kind <laughs> of uh they just don't really have much in the way of, of personality right um, and uh but they they make they make really good compost so i do a, a deep bedding uh way of keeping them in their pen um mm -hmm. They they've had to go into a six foot welded wire pin with line across the top because it didn't matter about uh, they don't they don't give two craps about uh, poultry netting, electrified poultry netting. They just <laughs> shove their way right through it or yeah. under it. Um, I clip wings. They just run faster and jump. It just so <laughs> we had to go do six foot. And then because of the hawks and the owls out here, we have to do overhead yeah. protection as well. So what I ended up doing was like a deep bedding method in their pen and just last week harvested out some fantastic compost for um, the potatoes. Um, just, just everything. We just kind of keep piling everything up, um, let it cook down. And it's, it's essentially the kind of chicken tractor on steroids style. Yeah. Um, it's just that they are, they are in that same spot. So, sure. Well, I know a lot of people that's uh, done turkeys and it's kind of like, the opposite it seems like for chickens like people start out with a few chickens they end up with like 100 chickens people start out with 10 turkeys and they end up with zero a couple of years later like i don't mess with those anymore yeah <laughs> i've yeah. met a lot of people like that but yep same like we yeah we had predator loss we had um i have moved them around in tractors before too yeah. um but they they they're they're and when they're when they're tiny when they're babies they're way less robust than chickens yeah. And once, you know, they kind of hit that three, four month old, if it can, if it's protected, they're fine. Like they don't, they, re they really don't have disease issues. They don't really have, yeah. um, they don't like pick on each other like chickens can. So that's, that's nice. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're fun. Like I said, I've been around them quite a little bit, but you know, they're, they're a fun bird, but yeah, they're not near, they don't have near the personality like a chicken does or anything for sure. <laughs> like you said. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not like you got, you know, quite a bit going on there, even on your little homestead, you know, outside the business, but uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, your, your business itself. What kind of work are you doing right now? I mean, not, I know you got plans to maybe expand and do different things and because you kept the the name so broad, so you could really touching other areas but what kind of stuff are you doing right now so the, the the bulk of the the focus of the business is finding the folks who are interested in getting their property productive and i can do it at you know at, at most scales i don't deal with huge ranches of hundreds or thousands of acres but um where i really like to operate the best is where i started out myself so urban and suburban lots up to maybe two or three acres and uh, I, I find those folks who are interested in productive property. And when I go out to their house, we spend as much time as they want and we thoroughly evaluate the property. Mm -hmm. We look at the solar aspect. We look at how the wind and the water comes in. We identify um, obvious issues that need to be corrected, runoff, things like that, ponding of water where we don't want it. Um, and then what probably the, the, the biggest factor is have knowing their goals. So we go in depth as to what do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? What is your timeline? What is your budget? We get all those questions answered and then, um, kind of discuss the best way to go about it. Mm -hmm. And for some people, and it's things like, you know, sometimes people travel or they have an active life with a bunch of kids or they're retired and they're on a fixed income, maybe less money, but they're there all the time. So we kind of take all those factors in sure. and uh, 
basically come up with a with a landscape design um, that includes the foods that they want to eat, um, the animals they want to keep, if that's relevant, uh, the trees they would like to have. Uh, I get in there and identify what they already have. Sometimes mm-hmm. we get surprised. We find all kinds of cool stuff. So we expand upon that if that's something that they want. Uh, we identify what needs to go away. So if we've got um, truly invasive thing, which is, you know, invasive species is kind of a contentious thing for some people. Sure. Um, but there are areas where it needs to be addressed. Um, and we'll do that. And then I'll, uh, after we kind of, after we've done the in-person uh, visit, I go back home to the desk and over several weeks time, put together a plan for them. And I present it back to them. And depending on like kind of what level of engagement they want, they can buy like a six month or even a one year partnership with me where I answer all the questions. I do all the research, anything they need, anything pertaining to that project. Um, I'll go back to the, you know, I'll, you know, revise things if needed, um, do further research. Um, I try to really earn my value on the research end of things and help them like sourcing materials, sourcing plants, Um, not just any plant, but what's the right plant for their microclimate, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of in a, in a, in a word salad there, uh, what it looks like when I go in and help people design their property. And I, and I do like to tell people like, I don't actually have a permaculture design certificate. Um, I have practiced the principles before I knew they had a word. I think the first time I heard the word was on your show and I'm like, Oh, there's a name (laughs) for this thing that I've been doing. Cause I was just interested in duplicating what nature already did on its own. Yeah. And then when I started finding the books and the articles and the videos and, and the other teachers, you know, Sepp Holzer and Bill and, you yeah. know, Jack and all these people who teach this stuff. And it was just kind of like brain explosion. Um, so, so yeah, I kind of figured out that it was a design science and I could, I could apply it anywhere on any scale. Yeah, I've helped people design little uh, townhome patios for food production. Mm-hmm. And then I'm working with some folks right now, just, just down the road from me that have um, about 14 acres that mm-hmm. we're going to kind of figure out. So, Yeah, you probably get it. people who just say, I just want a small annual vegetable garden and maybe a couple fruit trees. And then you probably get people all the way up to, I want a full-blown food forest with the pathways and guilds yeah. everywhere and the whole nine yards. And, and um, yeah, I imagine that's a lot of fun getting that kind of, uh, you know, just variety of designs. I mean, I, uh, if you were just doing one thing all the time, it'd probably get kind of old, but you get to go in and you get to have that same experience that they kind of get to have building a property and, you, you know, and, and really getting creative with that piece of property and just seeing what you can do with it. I think that's fun too. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I, um, I, I think I really, what I'm trying to teach people is how to, how to understand the land. And, and some folks already come to it with, with a pretty good grasp. Yeah. Um, other people, you know, sometimes I show up and I say, Hey, what most of the time, what direction does the wind come from? And they're like, oh, you know, I, <laughs> I don't really know. You know, I'm like, okay, well, let's figure that out. So, um, right now there's people that just have a hunger to learn Yeah. and I do enjoy teaching. I do enjoy discussing these things. So it, it's kind of a win-win. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, what people don't really consider. I mean, I, and I used to not either. I'm not going to say that like as a statement, like bashing on anybody. I can remember when it was just like, here's a sunny spot, put a garden, you know, and that's all I really thought about. And and when you get into permaculture more and really start studying, you start thinking about zones and sectors and all the, you know, variables. Uh, mm-hmm. It's amazing what you start really contemplating and thinking about in design. And, and it's amazing how much more you can do and how much more productive a property can be when you take in all those factors. So yeah, there's a lot of fun in it and it's a lot to think about and it's a lot to try to teach people too. Um, and, uh, some people, I think some people don't really want to learn. Some people just want the food and they want the production, but they don't really care about all the, the details of it. But then I think most people probably want to understand that a lot deeper and, and, yeah. and learn from you. Yeah. Yeah. That's been my experience as well. And, While a lot of it is kind of, uh, to me, almost second nature, Mm -hmm. uh, 
I have to remember that to a lot of folks, as long as you and I've been in this space, to a lot of folks, this is brand new. Yeah. And I'm still finding people who are simply blown away by the realization that they can grow food in their yard. Yeah. Um, I've got a lady I'm working with right now. Um, she's in an HOA. And oh, wow. that's a challenge. <laughs> working, you know, we're working with what we can do. But she just kind of woke up, you know, a couple of years ago that was, she was just like, no, I, I want to do more than just have this sod in my backyard and these two boxwoods in front of the house. Well, first thing you got to do is plant a for sale sign right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So as it turns out, there's actually a, a bit more uh, leeway in the interpretation of some of those uh, covenants. than we yeah, did Some of them. <laughs> yeah. So, not, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but it's, um, I, you know, I just, I really enjoy uh, showing people what the possibilities are. I taught a, a class um, through Patriot Church back in early February. Um, I was invited out there to kind of give a discussion on intensive gardening within small spaces. Uh -huh. And a lot of the people who attend over there, who attended the class, they have properties that are uh, like they they abut a golf course. There's a lot of retired people. They're in golf course communities. Yep. And, you know, I went out to some of their places. They invited me out there and found places to, to do stuff, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, they, you know, a lot of people were just kind of blown away by even just the concept of, you know, more use of vertical space and, and the layering effect that you can do with, uh, food forest design and guilds and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I, I was just talking to a, a lady the other day, um, not on a podcast, just in, in casual online. And, uh, she's growing 120 different plant varieties on her patio. If you don't have a yard, she just has a patio yeah. and, uh, she's growing all that. And I'm like, wow, that that's amazing. And it's just, you know, I mean, it, it's amazing what you can do with small spaces. If you're creative, it really is. Oh yeah. Yeah. So are, do you just uh, do a, a, a consulting and, and landscaping there locally or you travel quite a bit too? Or Yeah, I do travel a little bit. Um, I try to keep most of my actual installation jobs, you mm -hmm. know, within about 45 minutes or so of home. Yeah. Because um, I'm not I'm not actually crazy about driving all that much, especially right. all the years of being on the road on the ambulance and all. But I will travel up to about four hours um, radius of Knoxville for consultation work yeah um and beyond that we're starting if i if, if i'm more than four hours in any direction i'm starting to get outside of the zone that i actually know best mm -hmm. um i just you know if we're going to start dealing with like zone eight or six a or something like that or really high elevation of the mountains um things are going to be different and yeah, sure. i yeah. i'm very much like my skill set is down here in the tennessee valley of uh, you know shale and clay soil yep. and eva reservoirs and all the th things that come with that so uh yeah so that but that four hours i mean that's that's still that's a lot of people uh, yeah so there's a lot of variance there it. too yeah for sure i mean that's yeah. a couple you can go a couple zones each way there <laughs> yeah you know yeah. B's and A's anyway um yeah that's great man uh well let's talk a little bit about what like getting started in the business and and kind of the business itself i mean I've heard you say you may even ask the uh, pose the question here about community in um, in your business. Let's talk a little bit about the role that that's played in your business. Okay, so it's been like absolutely crucial yeah. because when I when I had the idea to start Strong Roots Resources, you know, I've been listening to Jack for a while, Jack Spirico. I've been mm -hmm. listening to Nicole, your show, of course, a few others, uh, Small Scale Life, those guys. Yeah, and. I knew I could do it, but I hadn't, I hadn't been getting out that much. I hadn't. Really By the way, all those much. people are way better at community than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it takes a lot of work and I'm, I'm kind of, um, I am more to the introverted side. Yeah. So when I have to go out and meet people, like I, I kind of have to have like this mental, emotional reserve of energy ready to go. And if I go to, you know, conferences or gatherings or whatever. But at some point, I was just like, I'm, I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to just get out of my shell, start talking to people, because I'm not going to get any customers if nobody knows this is happening. Right. So I want to say 
it actually kind of started with um, Rogue Food Conference, the first one, which John Moody's conference. Yeah. John Moody did that. Yep. John and uh, Joel Salton. Was there. Mm-hmm. So he was my hero because I was reading Joel's books almost at this point. It's probably closer to 20 years ago at this point. Yeah. So I, I knew, you know, I just I just love Joel's work. I loved his, you know, um, his attitude towards just, you know, do Life. the thing that is right. <laughs> yes. Like, don't worry. Not to say don't worry about regulation, but just do what is morally and ethically correct. Right. And sort the rest out later. But that it helps if you've got people backing you up. So, yeah. So I met those guys at Rogue Food Conference and a bunch of other cool people. So that kind of like got the ball ball rolling. March 2020 happens. Things get a little bit crazy. Um, and I just kind of just put my head down and just work. I'm like, let me just earn money because I just felt like if I can earn money, we can mitigate any other crazy stuff that comes our way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went to uh, the Living Free in Tennessee workshop in 2020. It was in April, but it got moved to June. So, and it was just like, oh, here's my people. Like, yeah. finally found people I could relate to. All those years on the ambulance, not really trying to dig on people. I've got three friends I still count as like people I would like call if I was in a pickle from 15 years on an ambulance working with hundreds of people. Yeah. So, but going to um, Nicole's in Middle Tennessee, it was just, it was just phenomenal. And we even, um, my wife and I both went and we were even kind of like on the quiet side and kind of like on the perimeter. Cause I like to uh, read the room and yeah. find my spot. I don't, yeah. I just don't know how to, I don't barge in on conversations. So, um, but we were just, we were warmly welcomed by Nicole, by Jenny Hill, Sean Mills, Brian Young. I mean, it's just like, suddenly I just had like all these people in my back pocket just because people understood the value of working together and doing stuff together. And yeah. it's just, I mean, it's just scaled up from there. I mean, it's just, it, it kind of blows my mind. I got to go to Jack Spierko's last November. Did you, on his meetups, did you? It was yeah. great. Um, they, I, I found out that um, they needed uh, one more like kitchen staff person. I wasn't really planning on going. Um, I really was, I really didn't want to drive the Jeep all the way to Texas, but uh, <laughs> I just, I, I came home one day when I heard him make an announcement and I asked Angel, I'm like, cause I think it was probably like July or August, somewhere around in there. And uh, I was like, you mind if I go to Texas? <laughs> and she was like, you know, go for it. it it'll work out. Just go for it. <laughs> So, yeah, so I, I, I texted his wife, Dorothy, who kind of handles that end of things for the workshop, yeah. talked to her. She's cool as can be. She's like, come on down. So I got to go check out, you know, his property and the kind of expanded community down there. So it's just it's just been phenomenal. Um, I can't recommend to people enough. I don't care who who your community is, what your interests are. Um, if you have a common interest, go to the place where those people are doing that thing. And, um, it's, it's just, it's a, the opportunities that open up from that are incredible. You know, I hear that all the time from people and, um, I find it difficult. You get so tied up in the busyness of your everyday life, mm-hmm. doing your things that you kind of have to do in your everyday life. And you just get busy and you think, hey, man, is it worth it to break away from the things I, I know I need to be doing right now? to go to, to take the time to go to these things. And I, and you know, I hear this from you. I've heard this from other people too. And I go, man, it, it, it's obviously everybody says it's worth doing that, you know, yeah. to break away and meet these people and, and spend some time with them and build a community and, and get the support and learn from them. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely need to do more of that for sure. I mean, it's something it's, it is so hard to break away when you're a busy person though, from just the things, you know, you just got to do every day, you know, it's, it's hard yeah. to break away, but it sounds like it's, it's been a, it's been a real huge benefit to you and your business. And I know a lot of other people have, have said the same thing. For sure. There's going to be a mid, I think it's called the Midwest preparedness festival 
that shouldn't be too far from you. <laughs> There's um, so many going on these days, conferences and festivals and, yeah, and things. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing an interview after this here in a little bit with a lady that's doing an Indiana homesteading conference. And, you know, and awesome. I'm kind of involved in that a little bit as far as a sponsor. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, there, there's stuff going on everywhere now and I love it. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad. I mean, I think it's, there's so, there's so much interest in homesteading and permaculture and gardening and just growing your own food and being more self-sufficient right now. And I love it. I just love that people are just really waking up to that. And if there was anything good that came out of these last few years, it's been some eye opening that's happened for sure. Yeah. And I've been able to largely find the, the proactive people and not the, you know, I'm not interested in the fear mongering and, mm-hmm. and yeah, I mean, worrying yeah. and, you know, weird random predictions. I don't, I'm not worried about any of that at all. I just, you know, I just want to get out there and, and take action and, and kind of help people do the same. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, that sounds like, yeah, that's been a, that's been a, a game changer for you. Probably pulled you out of your shell too and kind of forced you you know, once you meet a few of these people and then you're getting introductions to other people and it just, it breaks you out of your shell quite a bit, I'm sure. And, and uh, I'm a lot like you, I mean, I'm just kind of like to myself and doing my thing and, you know, it's easier sometimes, but there's so much benefit with community and, and making those connections that, uh, yeah, definitely has to happen. If you want to go to that next step, sometimes that next level in your life and, and, and do some things that you want to do, because, you know, I think there's a lot of folks in the homesteading, a lot of people who've been homesteading uh, for a long while that would just love to do uh, something full time in that area, mm-hmm. you know, in the gardening, maybe even selling something or running some kind of a business or related to that. Uh, let, let's talk about that for a minute. What kind of advice? I mean, you did it. You, you've kind of changed your life and went down that road. Do you have any advice for folks that want to take that step and, and you know, turn what they love doing in this realm? And turning it into a business. For sure. So, um, like I said, I kind of, um, I, I don't really um, incrementally do things. I just kind of hit <laughs> a wall of like, okay, I'm done with this. I will figure something else out. Yeah. With that said, I had the, the last two years that I was on the ambulance, I was working a, um, a 24-hour shift, which resulted in more overtime money. It was the most money I'd ever made. And while it wasn't anything ultra significant, it was enough to let us finally build like an emergency fund. Mm. So we had a buffer where I knew regardless of what came next, we had a few months of, you know, mortgage payments squared away and we had food stored and pet food stored. And it's kind of like in our you know utilities were inexpensive. So it's like, okay, this is the time to, to take that step. So if, if you're able to, get that emergency fund squared away. That's, that's huge. I mean, sounds that, like debt would be a biggest, one of the biggest <laughs> hurdles to overcome. If you can get yourself out of debt and yeah. some money in the bank, that's probably one of the biggest hurdles I would say. Yeah. And that's what we did. So, you know, we, we had like a, a bit of like a car payment debt and a little bit of credit card, um, got those paid off and we were down to where we just had the mortgage, you know, before we moved. So once I felt like I kind of had that breathing room, and time to sort stuff out. Um, really, my my key to success, even when I was just doing yards, I showed up, I communicated with people, and while I was sometimes unsuccessful at not overscheduling myself, that became an issue. I I really had to learn time management. Mm, uh, yeah. But once I kind of learned how to figure out how long stuff was going to take. Um, and just really, I mean, communication, it, it's number one. People don't really worry too much if you can't make it out that day for whatever reason, weather, overscheduling, what have you. If you keep them apprised, even just a quick email or a quick text, to let them know what's up, um, you're, you're going to be good to go. Yeah. So I had, I think at the peak of my lawn mowing side of things. I think I had about 25, 28 customers. It was bonkers. I mean, that was, that was me and a four by eight trailer and a push mower. Yeah. I mean, wow. I, I was, I was fit. <laughs> I was conditioned. That was for yeah, sure. For sure yeah. Um, so, so there's that. Um, okay. So if somebody's got not, you know, not that lawn mowing was my, was my passion, but man, I could earn some money in a day doing it. So that was nice. Um, I'm, I'm kind of like John uh, Pugliano with 
the wealth setting podcast. Mm-hmm. I like money. I don't have nearly as much, of it, <laughs> but I do like it. And it's true. Like it helps you solve some problems. That yeah, is for sure. yeah. Um, it won't fix all your problems, but it'll fix a lot of your money problems. <laughs> it, it can. And anytime I can reduce my stress, the more creative I can be. That's kind of how I work. Yeah. So um, it's cliche. If you want to do something, you've just got to start doing it. Don't worry about it being perfect. Don't worry about having the ideal equipment. Um, I'm still not working with the ideal equipment. I'm running around in a 97 year old Jeep Cherokee, you know, uh, don't worry about, uh, a lot of people worry about a business name or a logo or having a certain amount of, uh, you know, for God's sake, don't go get a loan. I feel like if you need a loan to start a business, a a small service business or a small product based business, I just, I, I, I think that's too sketchy right now in the economy anyhow. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and oh, I guess let me back up for a second. So I'm telling people to communicate. Yes. How you do it matters. Um, when I would see a post, somebody was looking for lawn service, maybe somebody is looking to have their garden beds redone. Um, I still get a lot of uh, business off of Facebook. That's why I still use it. Cause I see people posting. I answer, you know, 75% of the time I end up getting a job. If somebody posts, let's say in your local gardening group that they're looking for somebody to redo their flower bed, don't just reply on the post with your logo. Nobody cares. (laughs) What I will do is I will, you know, if it allows me, tag that person in the post and say, you know, hey, Judy, I saw your post. I may be able to help you. I'm going to send you some more information via private message. I I send the private message. I introduce myself I mean, it takes me a minute. Um, and I, for, sometimes I kind of have like a little template already filled out to help with this, but I address like exactly what she's asking about. So if she's saying like, you know, I really want these old overgrown boxwoods gone. I'll address that in the post. It shows her that I have actually read what mm-hmm. she's trying to get done. And, um, I'll tell her, you know, like, Hey, I can do that. Um, these are some good replacements you might want to consider. Um, I'll have availability on this date around this time to uh, to come by and look at things for you, no obligation. And I mean, it works a lot. So it's it's really in how you do it. Make it a little more personal. Um, show that you want to be engaged. Um, I, I feel like just throwing up your logo is the equivalent of just like frisbeeing a business card at somebody's face at yeah. a conference or whatever. Um, you know, show you care. It's sure. their property, you know. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I mean, I because I think a lot of folks do want to take steps to maybe escape their nine to five and get doing the thing they love more, you know. And it's a lot for a lot of folks in this area. It's gardening, it's landscaping, it's permaculture design, it's you know helping people grow food or just teaching them. Um, And uh, yeah, I think those are some good steps too because uh, yeah, people people want a connection. They want to to they want to know you. You know, they want to and they want to have that something deeper than just because they can they can get you know on the internet and look up local you know landscaping services that's if that's what they wanted to do that's what they would have done they're looking for somebody more personal more local you know small business or maybe somebody that doesn't even claim they have a business just some guy that does this for a living you know that's what they're looking for you know yeah i've got customers i've got one lady i'm on my fourth season helping her take care of her property and at this point like she she trusts me. She um she she trusts my assessment of things. If I tell her, you know, this kind of tree will do well there, or you know, she wants to put something somewhere and I know it won't work, I'll tell her, like, look, I wouldn't do that. You know, I don't think it's gonna be a good idea. Um, you know, I've I've been with her, you know, in the time I've been working for her, her husband has passed away. She's dealing with estate stuff, you know, she's got stuff that needs to um kind of be cleaned out and so like she she it, she's trusting me through this process i've helped her find a uh one of my friends is her like in-house pet sitter for when she travels so you know you can you can build these relationships and i kind of watch this and learn this from dad dad's been working as a uh, motorcycle technician longer than i've been alive <laughs> and he's got people that have been his customers from be- before i was born yeah because they know He's going to do everything right and he's going to, you know, 
make sure that bike is the absolute safest it can be before it's on the road again. So uh, you 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 can't look at people as like a kind of a generic interaction. Right. Um, and uh, and it's easy to do with the way kind of our society is is set yeah. up, but it doesn't have to be that way. Right. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you came a long way in that because it sounds like you maybe used to be more or less personal with people and and then you'd be kind of maybe the community thing has helped you a lot overcome that and kind of get a little more in touch with people, you know, face to face and approach them that way, huh? Yeah, it has because I've had a lot of really good examples set for me. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of the people within the community also run their own businesses or at least do some kind of side hustle. So I've been able to figure out, and when I'm not sure, just directly ask, hey, how would you handle this kind of situation? Yeah. Um, Because I've had, you know, I've had a few kind of difficult situations where work I performed was not up to a customer standard. And I was kind of not really informed (laughs) that they were unhappy with it. And, you know, kind of found out the hard way by a, a, uh, I I guess, a a critical post made about me on social media. That's how people do it nowadays. A lot of times, instead of just coming to the person, they just make it public. (laughs) Yeah. So I was like, well, I would have liked to have resolved that differently. So it's like I ended up, you know, issuing a full refund, which yeah, not fun, but, you know, that's ethically, that was the right thing to do. So, yeah. Yeah. um, So, yeah. So I've had a lot of opportunity to watch, you know, I've had a lot of examples set that I can, I can kind of, uh, take a, take a template of that and follow through. So, you know, I get, I, you know, Nicole's been a huge resource of, uh, of, I mean, she's, she's been a mentor. Like I've, I have hired her mentorship yeah. uh, services because she's that good at it. And yeah. sometimes I'll even go back to the drawing board or if I'm having a snag and I will pull up the notes I still have from that, from almost three years ago at this point and reapply it. And it works every time. And yeah, so. when I think about homesteading community, preparedness community, people in that realm, she's the first person that comes to my mind. She's just so good at building community and relating with people and and just making those connections. And the way she deals with people is really good. I just, I admire her for that a lot. She's really good at that. Yeah. 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 And and um, understanding people and communicating with them is, is a skill set. Uh, and probably not one that most of us are really taught in any kind of formal education system so uh you know she's she's got a background in you know corporate facilitation that kind of stuff and my you know my time on the ambulance did help me like i you know you are dealing with people and that's i think one of the reasons why i became so introverted there for a time was because people everywhere all the time became exhausting to me yeah so now it's it's kind of nice because i can kind of just break everything down into short small interactions mm. um and uh and you know it's I, i've kind of gained this perspective of you know it it's going to be okay like i have i have been in the midst of something that is very much not okay and it's going wrong in every every way possible and you know medical or traumatic situations um with that kind of insight um your uh your tree leaning over a little bit it's not a big deal and i can figure out how to fix that you know <laughs> right so, yeah yeah I, I feel like we've been name dropping a few people here and we haven't been mentioned in their pocket nicole sauce is her podcast is living free in tennessee a podcast and, and just a great podcast been around for quite a while now i think we mentioned jack spirico which is a survival podcast yep. uh you miss, mentioned john and his podcast already but yeah so i mean i i, I feel like i forget that maybe somebody's listening to this for the first time, doesn't know who we're talking about, but yeah, some great, great folks there to, to, to learn a lot from also. Yep. So yeah, good stuff. Um, now you're, you're out here and you're, you're obviously you're doing a lot of consulting and, and, and helping a lot of people set up their homesteads. Um, do you find that a lot of the reason people are doing that, or maybe you're having to convince them a good reason to do that is for preparedness. Let's kind of tie those two things together, preparedness and homesteading. Yeah. So, um, a lot of people will come to prepping, you know, storing food, you know, the whole beans, bullets, band-aids, that kind of thing, um, which is great and, and better than not doing it at all. But a lot of folks will get into that and then they'll realize, well, what am I actually doing with the rest of my property? Because you can fill up a closet or garage with stuff, yeah. but if you don't have some kind of regenerative system feeding things it will run out <laughs> you're, you're going to run out you know yeah. if you're going to work from the perspective of well these things may be hard to obtain 
Um, so, uh, I, I've kind of, um, I've helped people who come from both extremes. I've helped people who, uh, do have a, a lot of the, um, the, the stuff stored away and then want to do more on their property. Um, and I've met people who are very much your kind of average suburban American and they want food production. And then they realize, oh, well, I can also supplement this by preserving what I grow. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, kind of adding in other, you know, other bulk foods or, uh, whatever, whatever they, uh, people ask me like, well, what do you, what do you prep for? I'm like, well, I, I prep to be able to like eat and, Mm -hmm. you know, be healthy. I can sort out a lot of the other stuff and we don't actually need as much things as we think we need. So, uh, I, I really feel like they go hand in hand and I still, um, I still remember my great grandparents and they, they died in 93 when I was 10, but I still have a very strong recollection of being on their farm. Um, and Ma still had, I mean, even when she was in her eighties, she was still canning food and putting it in the cellar. And, you know, they had, uh, they always had a big garden. They had fruit trees, they had, uh, beef cattle and all that kind of stuff. So, Mm -hmm. To me, I wasn't all that far removed from it. Right. So I kind of um, go back and think, okay, well, they, you know, they had all this put together on, you know, uh, I'm not sure how many acres it was, but 70 or 80. Uh, so it's just, it's just common sense to, to, to feed the two into one another and, and to close all those loops. Yeah. I, I, when I think about homestead, that's why I enjoy teaching like the, the all encompassing area of homesteading. It's not just growing your food. It is food preservation. It's a lifestyle. It's got a lot of areas to it. It's, you know, it's, it's living uh, frugally. It's, you know, closing that loop. Like you said, it's the composting. It's, it's the whole thing, you know, it's, and I like teaching all of that and tying it all together because, you know, if you just grow it, but you don't know how to cook it or preserve it, you're going to eat for a time, but then, you know, winter time or depending on where you live, of course, I guess, but you know, there's just, it, it all works together in, in a, you know, in, in a symbiotic way to supply all your needs, you know? Mm-hmm. And I like this to see it all kind of working together. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, landscape design is great. Permaculture food for teaching people how to grow food for us. Great. I mean, all that's important stuff. And it is a big, you know, it's kind of where it originates, but without all those other things, you know, it's, it's just part of the picture. And I think to, to be fully pre- prepared and to, to have that, um, to have a, really a mindset change on the homesteading lifestyle, you really have to take the whole picture and everything together. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I know a lot of folks who do teach, uh, you know, uh, how to build a food forest or how to, uh, you know, garden or whatever. They just kind of focus on that only but it's good to remind people that there, there's a lot more to it than just that yeah yeah sure. yeah like we we've, we've kind of we're more carnivore heavy diet now um pretty much cut out all the grains most of the sugar and stuff like that mm-hmm. so i'm not actually storing a whole bunch of canned food we also don't have a whole lot of space we're off grid now so i don't have a lot of space that's um temperature regulated for canned foods mm-hmm. um but I can run freezers like a champ. So we have, <laughs> uh, you know, we have multiple ways of running freezers yeah. and we've, um, you know, we do a little bit of meat out here, but pretty much I, you know, we form relationships with local producers. Angel goes out, she puts her order in once a month. She goes out to the farms, takes the coolers, picks up everything, picks up the milk and all that kind of stuff and the cream. And then we just, you know, put all that into the freezers and then i found a deal on a um second like small uh medium-sized freezer made sure it worked bought it and it's not running right now but i've got that redundancy yeah. if one of them kicks over in a few minutes like move everything over no big deal i don't have two thousand dollars of meat going back so right. yeah so yeah i mean it looks different to everybody and that's where people just need to understand like there's not really a one-size-fits-all approach mm-hmm. to you have to you have to study your lifestyle and uh, yeah, make yeah it there's perfect. dozens of ways to preserve. There's dozens of ways to grow things. I mean, it's just yeah, it's just you got to make it fit what what fits your life. You know what kind of life you're wanting to build for sure. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I'm, I'm curious, you know, you're, you're doing your thing. You got stuff going on. Are you where you want to be? Or do you, you have a, is the future look different for strong roots resources? Um, I'm getting pretty close. Uh, ultimately like I, I want to be home more. So I still do spend quite a bit of time off site, you know, working on jobs, a little bit of travel time. Um, and it's ultimately like, I want this, where this property where we're at now, which is family land. My great grandfather bought it in the thirties. I'm like deeply connected to it. Uh, I want, I want it more productive. There's mm -hmm. a lot of work to be done here in the last, um, two and a half years. Like we've gotten a lot done, but, uh, there's just so many more, there's systems to be refined, more systems to be tied together. Um, sometimes I need to get, another set of eyes out here to help me. I'll probably get Ryan Steva or somebody like yeah. that out here because it's true. Like, you know, you'll, you'll, um, you, you look at things emotionally when it's your own spot, yeah. and not yeah. need that objective opinion. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, we would like to get the property more productive and, um, hold more classes out here. We do hold a, uh, quarterly kind of a swap meet and social gathering. Um, we've held, uh, a, portion of a pdc course that another person came out here and taught and we were the host nice. um, that was cool so there's lots of opportunity for that and we're kind of at this cusp of needing a little more money set aside to improve the infrastructure for more guests because right now we've got cabin we've got workshop i should say the cabin is 400 square feet as is the workshop so um it's cozy with yeah. two adults and the cats and the dog um, so we, uh, ultimately we want like, kind of like a pole barn style structure for holding classes, uh, hosting events. We'd like to continue to host homesteading related events. I don't really want to get into like wedding venue and stuff like that. That's popular for some farms. We're not yeah. really set up for that. Um, we're, uh, it's a little scrappy out here. Like it's, it's not a junkyard, but it's, it's, it's a working, <laughs> It's, yeah. a, it's a working place. So uh, we've got, um, we need it. Like I said, I just need a uh, a bit more in the way of infrastructure to sure. do larger groups. We're good for like, you know, 20 people or so, but beyond that, we kind of need more space. So well, that's the dream, huh? Just be kind of, kind of an education center to some yep. degree. Yeah, yep. that's, awesome. that's, that's the big dream. And that's, that's essentially my retirement plan. So I don't plan yeah. to actually stop working. I just, um, would like it to be a little less labor intensive, you know, sure. here in the next five to 10 years. Yeah. I like it, man. That sounds like a, yeah, that sounds like a heck of a plan. And I think, uh, yeah, you build the life you want, man. It sounds like you're working towards that and, uh, you're all well on your way and, and, uh, yeah, sounds like you got a pretty good thing going on there. Thanks. Uh, yeah. It's I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the direction of thing. You know, sometimes when I look back at where I was at, even, you know, three years ago, it's, it's kind of stunning. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, you know, I like to tell people there's there's nothing real special about me. I'm not an exceptionally smart individual. Um, you know, I'm passion, I, man. You got the passion for it. It's, I, I just I'll made take you a long way. For it. Yep. Yeah, I'll take you a long way. Well, uh, I think your encouragement to folks who are looking to kind of change their life, man. People are people are sick and tired of doing the thing they're doing, and they they got a pat. You know, folks that have a passion for it, and I think that's. I think you're inspiring to those kind of people, man. That like this guy did it. I think I could do it too. It sounds like this is the plan. And and uh, how how can people reach out to you and uh, maybe contact you if if you're able to maybe take them further or give them more information or even if they want to hire you for a job or whatever. Yeah, uh, the website is strongrootsresources.com. Um, folks are always welcome to uh, email me strongrootsresources at gmail .com. Any questions, questions about building a business, questions about landscape design, anything. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of kind of a polymath in that way. So I am more than happy to assist folks. Um, anything that they want to do to increase their personal resilience and freedom, I am on board. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you got to, like I said, you got to love for it, man. And, and, and I like the, I like, the, I love that you're trying to help people too. You know, it ain't all about the business. It's about relationships. It's about making people's lives better. And uh, I like that, man. You're doing some good stuff there. I appreciate it. And I know other folks appreciate it as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Well, anything else you want to add for, I let you, let you go. I'm good to go. I've got a trailer full of new plants. They're getting ready to go on the ground for a customer. 
Sounds like it's going to be a good day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's beautiful right. out here too. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on and, and telling us about the things you're doing. And I know it's going to be an inspiration to a lot of folks. Thanks, Harold. I, I enjoyed catching up with you. Looking around, I finally see I think I need a change. The rat race I want to flee My world I'll rearrange I'm getting back to the roots Of how it's meant to be Growing gardens, picking fruit Racing livestock, living free It's a modern homestead Why I wanna live this way They've never eaten from their land Like we do here every day Snapping beans like Grandma did Sitting on her front porch Hunting and fishing like a kid Once you've done all of your chores It's a modern homestead Today